Hey there, YouTubers. Guess what? Somebody asked a question. I'm going to answer the question with a little video. So get ready. Here we go. All right, everybody. So the question popped up of is how do I mount my seats? So this video won't be very long because I've already taken the screws out. But uh, what I usually do is two flat brackets that have two holes in them. You know, depending on the, the length of the seat, uh, I may use four on this seat. Uh, on the longer ones, I'll probably use five or six. So, you know, when you buy these flat brackets, wherever you buy them from, you know, Lowe's, Menards, Amazon, whatever, buy in bulk because you're going to use a lot of them. So, I'll flip this over and show you what I do. Basically, I'll move the camera here so you can see it. But basically, these little flat brackets, that's all I use. I got one on each side. On this part, those are the ones that go to the back. So, let me reposition this. And then up here on the front, I've got two more over here. So, these two I mount down first. Then I can come up under here with two screws. And then these two back here, I just go directly straight down with two screws. And after you have mounted it once or twice, then all you have to do is line them back up with the, the original holes that you had in there. And your seat will be in the exact same spot every time. That hole's just a hair off. There's that, and then these two are a little bit more of a pain. That was my camera a lot. Yeah. And like I say, these two, a little tough to see, but I just run them in until they stop. I don't torque onto them. There it is. And there you go. Any bus inspector that bus inspects this bus, they're going to come around. They're going to pull up on all the seats. If a seat comes up, it's a, it could be a fail. Uh, this is like this one over here. This one over here, I'm going to have to put some kind of a latch mechanism on it. Because when the bus inspector comes around and pulls up, this one's going to pull up. So it has to have some type of a latch or something down there because we don't want that to fail. But I have not gotten to that yet. So like I say, one of the people had asked a question about how I mount my seats and uh, that's how I do it. Now, let me tell you the advantage of doing seats this way versus these ones that are six foot, eight foot long, you know, really uh, stitched really cool and everything, the high dollar seats, it's what you see in limousines. I build party buses. In a party bus, you take a piece of wood, you wrap it, you staple it, you glue it, and all that kind of stuff. The advantage, the big advantage of doing them this way versus the other way, if you have a six foot or eight foot uh, covered seat that's all nice and stitched and everything like that, and I believe me, this has happened to me more than once. It's happened to some other people and I had to re recover seats for them in a, in a in a quickness because you know what else do you do what i'm referring to is somebody you, you go out on a friday night and you know and everybody parties and everything like that but late friday night if you're smart right after the run you clean the inside of the bus and you find out somebody did something drug something across it got mad took a knife to it whatever you ended up with a cut in this seat well, the way I do my seats, I can pull this seat out, rewrap it, and throw it back in the bus in 30 minutes. Now, if you had a six foot or eight foot bench style seat that was all stitched up and everything, you have to take that seat out, take it to an upholstery guy, probably spend $500,000 or whatever to replace or repair that seat the proper way. 
my seats, that's the, the biggest advantage of, of the way I do my seats. Because like I say, this is a party bus. This is not a limousine. Limo buses are completely different. In a, in a party bus, we get away with wrapping the seats this way. It's way cheaper, it's way easier, and if something does mess up, somebody spills something, because I sometimes I use uh, cloth in buses, which is actually really nice. I love tweed in a bus. But uh, say somebody spilled something on it or whatever and got a big stain on the, on the tweed. What are you going to do if it was Friday night and then Saturday you've got a, a 2 o'clock in the afternoon wedding to do? You don't want to show up at a wedding with a, a torn up seat. You don't want to take the seat out. You don't want to throw a blanket over it or anything like that. You want it fixed. Like I say, the way I do it, if you keep the material in stock, and usually I keep scraps, you know, and, and you know, extras and everything on purpose. But if you have the materials, a stable gun and the fabric, if they cut the seat 30 minutes, you can replace it. Problem solved. So like I said, I was asked about how to how to mount my seats down and I figured I would take this opportunity to explain why it's better to cover your seats the way I do versus the you know spending big bucks on limousine style seats and everything just to have somebody party and screw up and put a gash in your seat and it also makes it kind of tough to get any money out of your clients when Jan rented the bus she's responsible for everything but she doesn't know who in her party did the damage but yet she's got to pay for it she's responsible for it she signed the contract it puts people in a bad position, it puts us in a bad position as owners and operators, you know. So, the way I do it, you know, I may charge her 50 bucks just to, to recover the seat. That is way better than charging her 800 or or 1000 dollars or something like that to replace the seat because somebody put a cut in. So, like I said, just my, uh, my little suggestion, I think everybody ought to do their seats this way in a party bus. If you're building a limousine, a limo bus, that's a different story. That's a completely different world. Then you want to have the really nice high-end seats. But you're also going to probably use that bus for different purposes other than Friday night, Saturday night, bar hopping, crazy drunk partiers. Because those are the ones that do the damage. They don't mean to or anything, but I know what it is. You put 14 people in the back of a party bus, especially one that's got a dance pole in it, they're going to be a party. And they don't care about your interior. They really don't. So that's why it's best if you can do your seats the way I do. They're easy and quick to fix when there's a problem. And I don't say if there's a problem, I say when there's a problem because, like I say, probably in the whole time that I had party buses, which was probably 13 years or something like that. Um, I've probably replaced four seat bottoms just because they had a cut it. Build a party bus. That's a different world. This is a completely different, there is no limo bus manufacturer out there that would build a bus the way I do. I guarantee you that. And there's, there's no party bus company that's really going to build a limousine style thing unless they're building a limo bus. That's what I say. There's a difference between a party bus and a limo bus. So, just my opinion. But that's how I do my seats. You guys asked, I responded. So, everybody have a happy day. We'll catch you on the flip side. Remember, the party starts here. We'll catch you all later. Have a happy day. Digger is out. Hey, YouTubers. Next project is... I hope you guys didn't think I was going to leave that back wall looking all plain like that. No. We're going to, uh, I've got these pieces all cut and routered and everything. And uh, these are going to be pieces for around the uh, back of the TV area. So uh, I'm just going to glue these up. Something else uh, I wanted to share with you guys. When you're using this stuff, like I said before, you don't have to spray this stuff. You can brush it on. But, uh, you go through a lot of brushes because as soon as you take them out, obviously they get hard. What I found out is uh, my seat foam 
use that, dab it in there, squish it on, and uh, it works. When you're done, throw it away, grab it up. So what I'm gonna do right now, we'll, we'll end up time lapsing this, but uh, I'm just gonna goof all these up, wrap them, and uh, get all these done. That way we can go outside and install them in the bus. So bear with me as I smear glue. Just take this glue with this uh, little foam thingy right here. Make sure I cover the edges real good. The neat thing about this foam, this uh, glue, turns a yellow color so that you know that you have covered a spot. So there's one all covered with glue. See a little spot there on this. Smart guy, huh? Wearing a glove on one hand and not on the other hand. Yucky stuff. This stuff is nasty. Since it doesn't really take a lot of glue, this way actually really spreads it out pretty nice. I'll do this one and then uh, we'll just time lapse the rest of them. I always like to put this back up on top of the jar and put it down on the table. Next thing you know, it's stuck to the table. There you go. I see I need a little bit more glue in the corners here. I'll put that down to where I got two hands. make sure I always brush these things off really good before I uh, start applying the glue but obviously some little piece got in there but you always want to make sure you brush all that stuff off because if there's any little remnant of anything down in there it's going to show on the other side so stick that press it wrap it around the edges a little bit Razor blade. You just basically do these the way you do anything else. Doing these corners this way, that way they're a little bit more resistant on uh, showing up so much. Cut this down just a little bit. Definitely got to be careful you don't cut too much off. You always have to remember you got to wrap this stuff around. So there is that piece all ready to cover. But gotta smear some glue on the back side now. said before, I always want to start with the corners. Pulling 
catch the corn. And that glue is still a little wet. We always should let it dry a little bit more. Like I say, on the on the, the parts that dip down, we may have to do some relief cuts. Like we've seen me do before in the past. This glue sticks to itself very well. Sometimes it sticks to itself when you don't want to. Got just a little bit of time to peel it back and start over. I always like to do these low sections first. There we go. That's number one. So like I say, I'll do the rest of them and everything, but uh, I won't pay you to have to watch all that. We'll uh, just speed that up. Make sure all this little debris is cleaned up. Right before I uh, do all this stuff, I always brush the whole table off and everything. That way it's less likely to get that crap in there. So now we'll go ahead and uh, do this on time lapse. So, see you in a few minutes. Enjoy the music.
One more.
All right, everybody, so I've got these pieces all covered. So the next video will show you how I'm going to put these in the back of the bus. So there we have it. I've got these pieces made. Now i got to get out there to the bus and do an install. And uh, we'll uh, have a video on that in here in a little bit. So we'll catch you in a bit. Stop. All right, everybody. So these are those four pieces that I just covered back at the shop. So rather than do it all in one big piece and have so much scrap, I did it in four pieces. But I had to shoot this screw in here just to hold it all because I don't have any other screws in it all. And then uh, down here in the corners, I'll, I'll continue that out to the sides. So shoot some screws in this thing. I've already checked all my gaps all the way around and everything is good. So all I gotta do is shoot some screws to it. I'd feel back there and make sure that my screw wasn't going in so far that it would hit the TV. Because that would suck. Some extra screws in this before it's all said and done. Now right here, this is a little bit off, but I've got this side over here lined up. So we'll just pop that board loose and we'll knock the top over a little bit. This one we'll just pull it out, line that up, and run it back in. So now we've got nice little thing there. This is just a trim piece for the bottom that, uh, like I say, I'll continue it out later on. I may go back and put some brackets at the bottom of that because there's nothing really back there to screw this to on, on the inside that I don't really care for it being floppy like that. So let's throw another extra screw in right here on both sides. All right, so that part is taken care of. I'll give you a little more up close look at it. Like I say, that down there, I'll continue this off with another little wavy board here on the end and another one over here. And that will, then I don't know, I'm trying to think of some kind of little design to put back there on each side. Don't know yet, but it'll probably happen. All right, so there we go. This is how I do some trims. That's what I refer to all this stuff is. This stuff I, I call trims. Uh, as you put more trims in the bus and everything, it uh, that's when the bus starts taking on more personality. So that's the wrap up for today. So uh, I guess we will catch you all on the flip side. And remember, the party starts here. Have a happy day, everybody. Bigger is out. And hey, YouTubers, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button, maybe even that little ding ding bell thing. That way you get updated and you know what's going on right after I do it. So uh, tune in. There's more to come. The party starts here.